Hi, this is Craig Daniels. Welcome to Craig's Classroom. I wanted to take you on a quick tour of a recent change that Google Maps has gone through. Uh, if you're used to making custom maps in, in the Google Maps, um, you'll see that uh, they've changed things around a little bit. Um, the tools are in there. You just got to look a little bit into different places. And this is just a very whirlwind kind of video recording just to show you perhaps where you can find the things that you're accustomed to looking for. Um, I'll do a bigger and more detailed video coming up soon with a lot more detail, but for right now I just wanted to just basically orient you to what's new and how to find the things that you're familiar with. So let's just dive in here. I'm looking at a map of Staten Island, which is close, to, which is a neighborhood of close to where I live here. And uh, as you're in Google Maps now, you'll see that uh, things are looking a little bit differently than they have in the past. Up here at the top is the search box. If you click into the search box, it's going to show you some of your recent searches. And what's brand new uh, as of September uh, 2014 here when I'm recording this is that there's this last item here. Once you're in the search box, it drops down. It says My Maps. When you're in the My Maps screen, you can see some of the recent ones that you've created. You can click the link that says see all of my custom maps, which you can go to a list of all the previous ones, or you can click the button that says create. So that will go ahead and create a new map. Now the custom maps, and unfortunately it zoomed me all the way out here, so I'm going to zoom back into where I was. Just I'm rolling my mouse button, my, my mouse wheel to zoom in here. And I wanted to highlight a couple of the different parks, let's say. In, the, in a custom map, first of all, I might want to give it a name. So you could say Staten Island Parks. So you'll have a, a name for your map. On the toolbar here, you're going to see some of the different tools that you have. One is you can drop uh, a marker. So a marker like this might be, let's mark this as one of the parks. We'll call this Snug Harbor Cultural Center. And I'll save that marker. And if I click the marker icon again and come over, let's say, down here, I'll click in here. It's another park. It's called Silver Lake Park. So your markers could be then uh, anything that you want to just drop a big, basically a push pin onto your map. And you can go ahead and throw labels on there. So different highlighted points on your map. Now another way that you can customize a map is by drawing a boundary. And so this tool on the toolbar here allows me to draw a boundary. So let me zoom into the Snug Harbor Park here, and I'm going to go ahead and draw a boundary. It says draw a line. And But basically here, I hit escape there because I want to restart this again. If I pick a point, my starting point, I can click a series of points that goes around an object. So I'm, I'm going to just basically very quickly click a series of points that goes around my object and I can come back as a second step, which I always do, and clean up my points so that um, it's a little bit tighter if I zoom in and, and take a look at the corners. As I come around to the very first point and click on that first point, it closes the polygon. I can name it again. I'll call it Snug Harbor for the, for the boundary. If I click outside this area, that, that pop-up will go away. But you can see I can zoom in here and as I, as I click on that boundary, I can see my editing points. And I can fine tune that a little bit if I wanted to be a little bit more precise. So the first round, you can see I just kind of went around and loosely hit the points. And then I can come back and zoom in and fine tune these points a little bit here. And you see, if you drag the whole boundary, you could actually move the whole thing. So you have to be careful not to do that. But down in this corner here, let's say I wanted to clean this up a little bit by dragging those points to clean that up. And the other interesting thing about the boundary is that of all all the points that I clicked became endpoints or vertice points. Um, but in between the points that I clicked, there's another dot there that's a little bit lighter in color, and that's telling me that I could go ahead and take that point and drag that point out, and I could actually even fine tune my boundary further by dragging those midpoints out. All right, so there I have a boundary. I have uh, created some custom push pin points, a boundary, and now it's ready for me to go ahead and share this. And one of the, the best ways to share the map, I mean, you could share it with just a link. If I come up here into the share button, you'll see it wants to confirm the, the map title. And then you have to go ahead and 
set the, the permissions and right now it's set as a private map so that's obviously not going to help me if I want to share this with the world so I have to change this I would want to change it to be public so that anybody that uh, wants to can see this I'll go ahead and save that setting and I could go ahead and use this URL here to go ahead and copy paste that and I could just email that to someone say uh, and they could go ahead and o they would be able to open this map page but I'm going to go ahead and close this box. Now that I've gone, gone ahead and set the permissions to be public, I'm going to go ahead and close this page. But you'll see back on my main uh, box here, these are the different points that I set up, but there's a little button here with a little folder. If I click on that, you're going to see another interesting option, and that is I want to embed this custom map. So embed this on my site. So I'm going to click on that one, and there's my iframe that I could go ahead and I could copy to the clipboard that iframe code and then I could go over to my blog or a web page or my web site and go ahead and, and paste that iframe code in order to embed my map on my blog or website. Now you notice in, inside of that there's a bunch of sort of cryptic letters but right here you'll see width equals and then there's a number and then it'll say height equals and there's a number. So if you did want to change uh, the, those parameters you could just replace the the default 640 for the width or go in and change the default height of 480 you could type in any number that you want and it would go ahead and adjust the size of the map that you're going to embed so that's it I just wanted to quickly again a whirlwind tour take you on some what's new as uh, Google is implementing what is called map engine Maps Engine, so this different looking interface, but these tools that we had seen before with custom maps are here, but you can see getting into uh, the map so that you could find the familiar tools, you might ha have been a little bit lost as some of these changes took place, so this was just a very quick video just to give you a quick tour of how to find the things that you're familiar with. Again, I, wanted to re I want to record a much more detailed video in the, in the future so I'm not rushing through all these things but for right now I just wanted to get this recording out there so that uh, you'd be ready to go if for those who are already familiar with Google custom maps well thanks for joining me today again Craig Daniels Craig's classroom and enjoy my other videos on my YouTube page and of course catch me on my blog thanks a lot see you later